Where in the heaven is my Theracane? Hello? Hello, this is, hey, this is Michael Oldroyd. Michael Oldroyd tuning in. Michael Oldroyd, what's up, what's up? Testing, one, two, three. Jen, what's up? You on, uh, that you on YouTube there? Getting ready to fire up the engines. Brought to you by our sponsors, Gatorade. And Wonder Woman, guys, this is a Wonder Woman garter belt that uh, I caught at a wedding in Alaska a couple of years ago. So that's a good sign. It means that uh, someday I might get married. <clears throat> <laughs> Until then, good times. All right. Uh, whoever's tuning in, I appreciate it. I'm just getting ready to fire up the engines. I got my... Happy coffee mug. I don't know if you can read it because it's backwards. Oh, isn't it great when the tea uh, string gets caught in your teeth? And then you're like, oh, cool, floss. It's like floss if your teeth are really spread apart. If you had really good teeth, though, this is too wide for the in-betweens. This, this works for Michael Strahan, though when he wants to floss that gap. Uh, in fact, he could probably fit an iPhone wire. He could probably floss his teeth with an iPhone wire because his gap is so big. 17 Live AF streaming on you, streaming on YouTube Live. I'm not going to be doing any interacting here on uh, 17 Live AF today, but you guys can tune in, follow the podcast if you want. It's the Michael Little Droid Comedy Podcast. We're on Spotify, Stitcher. Actually, I don't even know if we're on Stitcher. And when I say we, I mean me. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't even know what Stitcher is. Is it a podcast? I'm pretty much on every live streaming or whatever streaming podcast function that you can get. And by we, I'm talking about Droid Entertainment. Uh, we're a collective group. Uh, we're a... Whoa. We all uh, are part of the droid entertainment vessel, if you will. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. We're getting ready to kick things off here in a uh, tick. You guys can just give me... Whoever is anonymously on YouTube right now, I appreciate you tuning in. Everybody ready to go? Are we ready to fire... Fire things off. We ready to put this out into the ether, into the universe. Let's make sure that all the audio. Let's make sure that there are no technical difficulties. I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick breathing exercise to get myself in the Zen like state. <sighs> I said what what in the butt I said what what in the butt I said what what in the butt I said what what want to do it in my butt in my butt you guys remember that song by Sam Sam well uh, I'm sorry that you can't hear it too well Jen that's too bad YouTube I apologize if you're not able to hear but that's just kind of the the, the best audio quality is obviously going to be post production um i'm recording on a yeti blue microphone here uh the reception can be spotty but if you want a crisp sound you can wait until the actual podcast comes out uh, spotify is probably the most universal platform and most well known um if you're an apple user it's on itunes and just type in michael ultroid comedy podcast and you'll probably uh be aroused in a non-sexual way. Maybe you'll be sexually aroused too. I don't know. I mean, uh, comedy can be seductive. Uh, laughter is attractive. Humor is attractive. I, I was attracted to an 82 year old woman once that had a great sense of humor and it was non-physical, but it was still sexual. So, and it was based on her sense of humor. So, uh, I think we're ready to fire it off guys. So let's do it. 
<clears throat> and by the way, this this episode is somewhat. Uh, I, there's no rating on it, but it has the ability to be explicit. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth, so I apologize in advance. Uh, and if this is a, a crowd that can't take uh, the edges being pushed, then I uh, recommend you turn off that podcast ASAP. So we're going to get started now. Uh, welcome to the Michael Oldroyd Comedy Podcast. Let's do this. How now, brown calf? How now, brown calf? Unique New York. Unique New York. I'm a big deal. I've got many leather-bound books. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Michael Oldroyd Comedy Podcast, episode number 82, Roman numeral LXXXII aka double deuce there and as i am talking i have a new follower on instagram that makes me very excited uh so you guys just race i mean it gives me a boner i don't know about you guys but it really gets me horny uh i want to get new followers uh speaking of that if everyone could just take a moment out of your day and give me something that i like to call the turbo follow i'd greatly appreciate just a quick turbo follow that's where if you're not already doing it, you follow me on every single platform that exists. Uh, well, I guess not exists. I'm on more than I'm going to shout out, but it's pretty much at the droid everywhere. T H E D R O Y D. Think uh, the droid as in R2 D2 or BB 8 from Star Wars. Uh, I'm on Twitter at the droid, Instagram at the droid, YouTube at the droid. I'm live streaming from YouTube right now. I'm also live streaming from 17 Live AF. It's an app on your phone. It's the Droid. Feel free to give me a TikTok follow if you're on TikTok. Uh, it's at the Droid. Uh, Tumblr. I actually don't know. I assume it's the Droid, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's Michael Old Droid. Uh, Pinterest. I don't think I'm on Pinterest. LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn, but don't feel free. Don't feel like you need to follow me on LinkedIn for heaven's sakes. Uh, LinkedIn is, is, is an interesting platform actually. Uh, yesterday I was doing comedy and I was talking about LinkedIn and now I think it's the best dating app out there. And somebody in the audience said, Oh, thanks man. I work for LinkedIn. Uh, it was actually a female, uh, and, uh, it was very exciting. We, we bonded over LinkedIn and, uh, yeah. That's not really a, a story with any kind of a punchline, but it is a fact. And it's interesting because in New York City, you will see people that work for all the big companies uh, around the world, everything that you've heard of, Snapchat, the Snapchats, the, the Facebooks, the LinkedIn's, the Googles. So it's kind of fun that any night when I'm performing, I could be performing for really anybody. And that really tickles thine fancy. It tickles my fancy. It makes me... Uh, uh, it pushes me, to, you know, you just never know who's watching, I guess. So, uh, welcome back. Feel free to give me a follow. I'm on Pinterest. I don't know what it is. Don't follow me on Pinterest. Uh, yeah, I think that that's probably, <laughs> that's probably it. I'm going to make a flyer to hand to people after shows that has <laughs> every single one of my social media. Just, all right, guys, welcome and uh, let's give a shout out to our sponsors, right? The uh, Theracane. I don't know if you guys have heard of Theracane, but it is a company out there that makes an apparatus that you can use to massage your back when you don't have somebody to do it for you. And by massage your back, I mean Theracane is not a sponsor. Uh, I wish, though. Uh, I don't have any sponsors at the moment of the Michael Oldroyd Comedy Podcast, so I just give shout-outs to random companies that I like. Basically, companies that um, that I would endorse whether or not there's money involved. You know why? Because my credibility to my audience is based on honesty and trust by Zeus. I don't need to get money involved. 
you know what? If Thera Kane wants to throw me a couple dollars or a few uh, magic sticks to rub my back with, then uh, awesome. But guess what? I'm doing it because I like you, Thera Kane. Not because uh, it's some sort of a quid pro quo situation here. Um, speaking of that, is anybody into cuckolding? Cuckolding is how I wanted to start off my last podcast. And I'm going to start today's podcast off with cuckolding. Um, I, uh, I think cuckolding is a, is a, is a phenomenon that is uh, sweeping the nation as a new porn genre. And uh, what I can say is definitely a weird, a weird genre, but uh, there are some people out there uh, who are into it. Uh, I know somebody who actually participated in a cu cuckolding. Apparently there's terms. He was not the bull or maybe he was the bull. I guess the bull is the husband who watches. I don't know. So I had a buddy. I went on spring break several years ago and one of the guys in our group very bad with women. I was bad with women myself, uh, but not as bad as this guy. This guy was horrendous with women. Um, what if I am talking about myself? Nevertheless, we, we were uh, down in Florida, and uh, every night, you know, his, his attitude was, dude, chicks, bro, chicks, right? Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a number and I'm going to hang out with chicks. I'm going oh, I'm going to get laid tonight, guys. I'm going to get laid. That was his, uh, mode of operation is mod uh, guy never got laid the guy i think he got one girl's phone number oh actually there was a night this is fun before i get into the cuckolding story there was one night where he got one girl's phone number uh on spring break and him and another dude on our trip who uh also had zero game i'm not gonna give any names away right but both of them were going to team up and they were going to go hang out with these girls right this girl uh he got her phone number she's got a friend uh my buddy and our other buddy we're going to team up and uh you know I, I heard them i heard them saying dude what should I, how should i respond you know doing the whole text thing finally they're like all right we're leaving dude we're gonna go hang out with these chicks it was like three or four in the morning right and uh I'll be darned. They come back about 30 minutes later and all the guys were laughing. We're like, dude, why are you guys back so quickly? And they're like, ah, they wouldn't respond. These chicks ghosted us. I'm like, let me see this text history. Right. So he shows me his phone and the girls responded like four hours before that and said, yeah, let's hang out. Uh, and these dudes didn't respond to them or give them an update. They just started driving over there at 4 a.m. And I'm thinking, dude, they're asleep, dude. They're like, these girls fell asleep. I don't know if I'm telling this story in such a way that makes sense right now. It feels a little disconnected, but just know that these guys were so disconnected with humanity that they couldn't, they didn't even realize that it's important to not wait until 4 a.m. after four hours of no texting and update. And when I said that they were probably sleeping, they got excited, right? They're like, you think? Like, like somehow that's, oh, so they're not rejecting us? You mean that there, there might be a chance in the future? <laughs> there was no chance in the future. Uh, that was their only chance. They blew it. Uh, but this one buddy who hadn't been laid in, I don't even know how long, it was years, months, I don't know, right? He calls me several months later, one day over the phone, right? I get a random phone call from him. I pick up and he goes, Mike, dude. I'm like, what's up, man? what's he got for me, right? This dude goes, dude, I got laid last night. I'm like, by the way, this is the cuckolding story. Guys, are you are you intrigued? Uh, so he says, dude, I got laid, bro. I'm like, wow. You know, like, who would have thought this guy, right? Uh, as a younger guy, that was my, I would have thought that. As an older chap now, I think the sky is the limit for anybody. You can do whatever you want in this world uh no holds barred but back then i was kind of astounded i was happy for him because it was something that was important to him right and i said okay well tremendous tell me the story right he goes well i was out i was out last night and uh i was at the bar i started talking to this girl at the bar it was going well and uh, i said do you want to come back to my place and by his place he meant his parents place because he was still living with his parents at the time uh, 
and the girl, the woman, the woman said yes, believe it or not. And they, uh, and when I say believe it or not, what I mean by that is if you knew this guy, you would think that no woman would ever say yes to him. <laughs> uh, so anyway, she, she gets in the car with him. She gets in his old whip, right? Gets in the old whip and they're driving back to his parents' place. And my friend uh, noticed that every time his car made a turn, another car made a turn behind them. And he said, I think someone's following us, right? And she said, oh yeah, it's fine. It's my husband, no, no, no problem. And he just kind of went with it. I don't even think he questioned her. He was just like, really, husband? But he didn't want to like mess up a good thing. So he... <laughs> anyway, uh, they get to his parents' place. He gets out of the car. The husband behind them who had been following them also got out of his car. And immediately the husband approached him and said, thank you so much for doing this. You know, we've been we've been looking forward to this for a while. And we just needed to find someone who, who was willing to... <laughs> to follow through <laughs> right and uh my buddy is such a weirdo that he was like oh no worries right so he takes this husband and wife into his parents house basement and proceeds to have intercourse with this woman while the husband is watching and uh on on the pull-out couch right there's some pull-out couch in the basement if i'm not mistaken at the time and uh, he tells me this, and I'm just in disbelief. You know, I'm, I'm, I, my, my, my mind was actually expanding. It's like the first time you learn about a black hole, and you can't wrap your mind around the complexity and the ever evolving, ever evolving vortex that exists in front of your face, right? And I was astounded. I was intrigued. I was happy and concerned at the same time. Uh, glad that he was okay, right? That this wasn't some heist or, or not heist, but uh, criminal situation where he was going to get robbed or something. Uh, and he seemed happy. So it seems like a win-win-win situation. The trifecta where all three parties walked away from that situation happy. And that is the closest thing to cuckolding that I've ever experienced. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but... Um, it is, it is a thing that exists, and I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it comes from boredom. Uh, maybe it comes from finding it exciting to see your partner get railed uh, by someone else. Maybe, maybe you think it's attractive to know that your partner's uh, attractive to others. Uh, I know that uh, when Jessica and I broke up, uh, it turned her on knowing that I was with other women, and uh, that was unique. That was a surprising scenario. She broke up with me. And when she learned that I was uh, mixing it up with the ladies, uh, it, it aroused her. <laughs> so I asked her if she'd be into cuckolding, you know, <laughs> in the, in, like where the woman's watching. And she was like, absolutely not, because that would, she does have feelings for me still. And that would be too far. But nevertheless, it was enough to get her stimulated and intrigue her. Uh, it was a byproduct that I was not intending or going for. But hey, sounds like uh, when you live in honesty, guys, and, you, and you're straightforward with people, the world has a, a weird way of coming back around and rewarding you uh, with uh, pleasant surprises. So that's a little bit about cuckolding and the mindset behind the cuckolders. Nevertheless, let's get started. You guys, you guys ready for the freaking uh, episode 82? Uh, I'm going to continue this trend of the numbering deal. I'm a big fan of numbers, as I mentioned last time. And I did forget last week was episode 81. I forgot to, to give a shout out to my man, Denario Alexander, my college teammate at Mizzou, who went on to play in the NFL for a few different teams, the Chargers. Uh, I know he was with the Chargers in San Diego for a while. Uh, Denario Alexander, Mr. 45-inch vertical. He made me – oh, sorry, 42-inch at the time. Maybe it's 45 later, but in college he had a 42-inch vertical. Made me look like a putz. My vertical was 35, which is actually pretty damn good. Uh, anybody that knows anything about vertical leaps is probably – aroused and either not believing that I could do 35 inches, uh, but 
when you've got guys that are as great of athletes as I was surrounded by at the University of Missouri, it makes you better, right? It forces you to be better. So 35 inches uh, for me, 42 inches for Denario. He was a couple inches taller than me as well, had a long wingspan, um, and uh, he was cool. There was a news story that they did on me once, and they interviewed Denario on the uh, as part of the story. And uh, they were, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that news story that was put out by KOMU a while back uh, about my work ethic and, uh, you know, the never die attitude and all this stuff. <clears throat> and uh, Denario was talking about how uh, he's like, we used to tell Mike, you know, you know, quit with these jokes, uh, you know, just play football and go to school, right? That's what he said on TV. Let me tell you something. He never said that to me in real life. I don't know why he said that on the news. Maybe because it sounded like what he's supposed to say. But Denario, you never told me not to do that. Maybe, I don't think, maybe you did tell me, Denario. Maybe my memory is is lacking because I got smashed in the head by Sean Witherspoon so many times and I have CTE. Uh, nevertheless, though, Going with that trend, we are in episode 82. I want to give a shout out to my man, Martin Rucker uh, from Mizzou. He's always been a big support and just a tremendous athlete, a great teammate of Mizzou uh, for all the guys. You know, we all we all loved Ruck. Him and Chase Kaufman were just studly, studly tight ends. Shout out to Chase. The two of them were the thoroughbreds that led the tight ends uh, on our team. And... Uh, Gave guys like John Gissinger, uh, you know, uh, a good uh, kind of um, thing to shoot for. Uh, John Gissinger was a big uh, friend of uh, Chase Daniel. Uh, they lived together. And uh, Giss was the guy who used to go around saying, Hey, hey Oldroyd, you horny, dog? Hey, hey, hey Oldroyd, you horny? Uh, that's, where, that's where I got the you horny phrase from. And he also, Giss used to know, he knew I worked hard. He would mess with me every day. He would say, hey, Oldroyd. Are you getting bigger, dog? Are you getting bigger? Are you, are you taking steroids, old I was like, do I really look like I've been getting bigger? Because I've been working hard, man. Thank you for noticing. He's like, no, you, uh, no. I was like, you think I getting, I'm getting bigger, guess? He's like, no. <laughs> so he would tease me. And uh, the girls loved Giss. You know, I don't know what it was. Giss, if you guys don't know Giss, he was a very loose dude from San Diego. His dad played in the NFL. He was a full-ride scholarship tight end. Laziest dude I've ever met in my life. Uh, didn't care about football at all. Uh, went through the motions. Loved to pretend that he was injured so he didn't have to work out. Uh, and uh, you know, I I, I remember. Um, I just I just remember thinking he had long hair. He was a little overweight, and he would say th he reminded me of like a really laid back apostle. You know what I mean? Like if Jesus had like a party apostle, like an apostle who just didn't, who just like loved to drink wine and like laugh and have a good time. <laughs> you know, he, he looked like, like a, just a, an apostle that liked to party. You know, that's what he reminded me of. Um, John Gissinger. So moving on, uh, I did give a shout out to Martin Rucker. Uh, he's always been, uh, he actually came to my, my Kansas city, uh, comedy special recording, which was really meaningful for me. And he, he carried the crowd much like he carried defenders on his back when he was playing at the University of Missouri. Truck, uh, truck T-Ruck, basically, it was like this the, the drum of the audience. Like His laughter was so loud and contagious that it made me look funny, you know, when I would tell jokes. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I just felt like, like I could just like see Ruck in the audience just hitting a big drum, you know, the way that he used to whenever we uh, when we toured up against like Kansas and teams like that. But yeah, Ruck was uh, was a star. He he was good at uh, handling the the attention, you know. He there was always people wanting to talk to T Ruck, you know what I mean? And Ruck gave me some advice about the ladies, guys. He 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 mentored me and helped me overcome my lack of confidence with the ladies, and he was always good to me. Uh, I appreciate Martin Rucker. He's a good man and uh, a good teammate. And uh, he, he ran for a political office up there in St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, he's got a family now. Real happy for the dude. So, T-Ruck? Uh, 
What else, though, guys? John Taylor was another number 82 that I was a big fan of back in college. Uh, actually, not just college, but growing up, he played football for the 49ers. Ironically, as I was getting ready to record this podcast this week, I saw John Taylor uh, in some highlight tapes. He played with Jerry Rice and Joe Montana. John Taylor had, uh, uh, I think he had a really important touchdown in the Super Bowl against the Bengals back in like the late 80s. I forget the whole last drive, but when Joe Montana and, and the Niners came back, John Taylor, I think, had a really pivotal touchdown in that comeback or in that game that, that led them to that W. So good old John Taylor, uh, J-O-H-N, great name there. My brother's name is Jonathan John and John, right? J O H N versus J O N. Gister J O H N is uh, is different spelling, different meaning, uh, but both by John. John Snow, J O N, right? It's always interesting to see which spelling you are with the name John. Every time I meet a John, I'm like, uh, hey, which John are you, J O N or J O H N? Right? And when they say, if they say J O N, I say, ah. Good one. That's the best one because my brother's name is Jonathan. Is your name Jonathan? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And then if they say it's J-O-H-N, I also say, oh, that's the best one. That's the right spelling. That's the way it's spelled in the Bible. John the Apostle. So John the Baptist. <coughs> so no matter what, it's good is what I'm trying to say, right? No matter what, it's the best one. And I love you. That's coming from Michelangelo Oldroyd, the divine humorist a.k.a. number three. You know, Michelangelo was the divine craftsman, and we've talked about that before, so I'm going to move on, but I am making flyers for my comedy right now, and I was thinking of having the catchphrase, the divine humorist. Uh, not sure, but uh, Jessica, my ex-girlfriend, is helping me with some flyers and some marketing materials. Are you guys bored? All right, let's talk some more about football. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe I'm, how many minutes am I already into this freaking podcast? We are 20 minutes in. I, I, I don't want to talk too much, but you know, I can't help myself. This is fun and it's stimulating for me. Uh, anyway, we talked about Denario, gave him my shout out, talked about the new story. Uh, Nario, he was good friends with J Mac. Uh, yeah. Did big things at Mizzou, did big things afterwards. Uh, what if I just repeated everything that I already said? What if I, like, talked about Ruck again and then Denario and then asked for another turbo follow? <laughs> uh, and then I, what if I told you the cuckolding story again? Wouldn't that be heinous? I think some of you guys would want to hear that again. In fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was, like, a live uh, – group sending like live up-to-date messages asking questions you're welcome to do that anyone who's watching feel free to ask questions about the cuckolding story or, or anything else um either way we're gonna move on so <clears throat> we got some stuff going on in the nfl this this week so that's exciting i think we're a week what week six now uh always uh Always a doozy, right? The, the, we're in the thick of the season, so let's let's hit you with the trifecta as far as high school, college, and football. Eureka High School is still having the winning streak. Uh, we had another game last Friday uh, after homecoming. We won. It was a big game. Tomorrow night, Friday Night Lights once again. I think we're playing Kirkwood. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jeremy Mashklin is coach, or coaching at Kirkwood now under Farrell Shelton, who was our high school football coach at Eureka. So Coach Shelton took the job, a.k.a. Coach Kilmer from Varsity Blues, <clears throat> a.k.a. John Voigt, took the job with Kirkwood uh, a few years back, and every year we want to kick their ass even more now. Um, but how crazy is it that Jeremy Macklin is coaching under my high school football coach. Ultra right, son! You are the Achilles heel of our defense! What were you thinking? What were you thinking? That's my uh, impression of good old coach Coach Shelton there. So I hope we kick Kirkwood's ass uh, this tomorrow night. It's always, uh, it's always a big game. Um, and that's where we're at with high school football. What else? Mizzou. 
homecoming game this weekend. Very exciting. I was reading this invitation I got from the varsity letterman group. It's a group uh, for the varsity athletes that won, earned their letter and got their letterman jackets at the University of Missouri. I can proudly say that I, I did get one my freshman year, uh, running a race by kicking a Kansas athlete out of a scoring position uh, by beating him at the tape right there in the 600-meter dash indoor. Uh, so that was a big deal for me to get that Letterman jacket and, um, you know, and to be able to, to be invited back to these. They have like an entire itinerary. If I if money if money and time were not scarce, meaning that, uh, you know, if, if my career was further along in comedy and I could focus on you know, I could just be a phantom around the world, which I kind of already am, uh, I would go back to homecoming and do that fun itinerary this weekend. Uh, I don't know. It's always good to go back to Columbia, Missouri, especially for homecoming. We've got a big, big one this weekend. And I'll probably watch the game at the alumni bar here in New York. Took the week off and watched it here at home last week. Uh, wait, no, I didn't. I, I was tracking the game on score. The, ES, the app that ESPN uses, it's called the score. I was just following updates because the freaking game wasn't being broad broadcast. What the frick? You know? What the frick, guys? All right. So <laughs> uh, I'm excited for homecoming. Hopefully this one will be nationally broadcast. If not, uh, I'm going to just jerk off with my fleshlight. Um, so with that said, with that said, we'll talk about the NFL. The 49ers played Monday night. That was they kicked ass. The 49ers are doing really well this year. I think they're four and one now. So I guess this is week five that we're going into. They beat the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, did well. Let's give it up for that cross earring that he's got on his – hanging down from his ear. I don't know if he puts his helmet on and off. He's less flashy now, I've noticed. I think he's getting older. He seems uh, to be a little more serious about the game. I saw a video that I liked of Odell Beckham on Inst – I see – he's like all over my Instagram feed probably because of the stuff that I follow and like, including him. Uh, and he – there was a girl – who was who had a disability and he he was uh, entertaining her and dancing for her and kind of making her happy and I I really liked that. Uh, one of the things that I liked about that I do like about Odell is I think that he was humbled after an injury that he had and it did bring him closer to the big guy upstairs. Uh, when I think of and, 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 and something about being humbled. There's something about being humbled that brings a lot of us back to that central theme that I oftentimes talk about without being preachy. It just happens on its own. There's no, it's like fate or something, but I do like that. He's, uh, that he's grounded in that, um, in that, you know, it's, it's about, I like it when a football player isn't, doesn't think that they're the center of the universe. I talked about that even last week. Uh, and the team is bigger than they are. Putting, you know, putting the higher powers above yourself is, is humble and it's, uh, it's likable. It's, 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 it makes you want to follow their story. And, uh, that's how I live my life. You know, I was humbled. And, um, one of my buddies, uh, John, when he first met me, he was like, he, he was like, how are you so humble? I was like, dude, first of all, thanks. That's nice. But. Um, uh, the reason I'm humble is because I've been humbled. I've been absolutely knocked on my ass in this life time and time again. And I've truly had my world shaken to the core and, and had to rebuild from, from ground zero, you know? And, and I think when that happens, it is a very humbling thing. Uh, you realize that, uh, none of us, nobody is, is, uh, you know, above, you know, being cocky, uh, nobody is, is really has the right to be cocky about anything. You know, you, you quickly realize that the, a lot of the success that you achieve comes from the help of others. Of course, you have to work your ass off too, and give yourself a pat on the back for that. Um, and, and be proud of those efforts, be proud of those achievements, but you got to keep the bigger picture knowing that it's, uh, it, it takes a lot more than just yourself to, to, to create success. So, um, that said, uh, I have been following Odell Beckham Jr. Is what I'm, <laughs> is what I'm Odell Beckham Jr. <clears throat> has a tattoo of Michael Jackson, and it says greatness. 
And I, I, I saw that when he was, uh, he was, I, I saw some picture of him icing something like his leg or something after practice. And I was like, okay, that's what's up. I see you. I see you, OBJ, with the MJ tat. Blah, you know, recognizing greatness. Uh, as long as Michael Jackson is innocent, then I'm, you know, 100% cool with that. If not, Odell Beckham Jr. I I wonder what he thinks. I wonder. I, I assume that he got that tattoo before all this stuff came out about MJ. This is just a hypothesis, but if he if that's not even true, you know, is it is it one of those deals where he's like, oh man, I got I got to get this tattoo removed now because I think like what do you think do you think that OBJ thinks that MJ is guilty? And if he does think that he's guilty, does he want to get that tattoo removed? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Let's move on to the New York Giants. Uh, Eli Manning was still uh, benched last week, and Daniel Jones uh, and, the, and the Giants did not come away with a win last week. So, uh, hey, we'll see. Uh, does anyone know who's starting this weekend? Are they going to have Daniel Jones start again? Uh, I assume they will, but I wonder how many losses they'll give him till they throw Eli Manning back in the mix. Uh, kind of an interesting thing that the Giants have going there. I'll talk about my my relationship uh, and, and my, my workouts here in a bit. But in the meantime, Chase Daniel and the Bears, they played in London. It was his first full start. Uh, I saw a picture on Instagram that he posted. Humble stuff. Chase uh, posted a picture of him and his wife in London have a nice, having a nice night out before the game. Uh, they did not come away with the win, but from what I could see, Chase played really well. Uh, they they barely lost uh, to the Raiders. Uh, Chase had some really good numbers that he put up uh, through two touchdowns, an interception. Uh, I had improv practice, so I had to miss the game, which I was really kind of upset about because I, I really wanted to see that. But you know, at the same time, I gotta I gotta make sure that I'm not letting the comedy piece falter. <clears throat> but. Uh, if you follow my YouTube channel or LinkedIn, you saw that I, I made some content this week about the Chase Daniel mindset and what I felt made him successful. I think it's worth taking a look at. You know, I think it's worth it's it's content that that can be digested and, and learned from and appreciated. Not just appreciated, but actually used to your advantage. Uh, I don't talk about things like perseverance and hard work. Those are kind of my staples. I think those goes with those types of things go without saying. I really get into the objective side of, of the way of really Chase's mind uh, on how it, it appeared that he approached the game. I'd love to have him on as a guest on this podcast to validate that that's actually how he sees it. But that was my perception uh, of Chase. Uh, and I thought it was a really good takeaway. Speaking of the Bears, I meant to mention it last week when I was in Chicago. Shout out to my man, number 34, Walter Payton. God bless. Rest in peace. Uh, to this day, when I was in Chicago, I've still never seen more jerseys worn of anyone than Walter Payton. Still to this day, people rock the Payton. Sweetness was his nickname. You want to talk about unselfishness. You want to talk about putting the team above yourself. You want to talk about not complaining, working your ass off, putting your brothers ahead of yourself. Walter Payton was the epitome of this. He was the epitome of giving back to the community, standing for something that was good, being classy. He was, <clears throat> it was like a Jerry Rice as far as work ethic goes. One of the greatest to ever play the game. Terry Steve, my high school football coach, uh, talked about how Walter Payton was, I think, either the toughest or, or, or something of that nature, the toughest player that he ever had the opportunity to watch and play against. Uh, the night that Payton passed away, it was, it was our last game, my seventh grade year of football, Eureka. And it was a night game. It was the biggest game of the year. And it was the night that Walter Payton passed away. And we dedicated that game to, to Sweetness, a.k.a. number 34. So always want to give him a shout out. Always want to keep that name fresh. You know, they talk about certain things you never want to forget. One of those people is Walter Payton, what he stood for. Um, his legacy lives on. They say, uh, at least, I don't know if they say this. This is what I say, but I think what you do for yourself you know, that, that what you do for yourself in this life, you bring that with you to the grave. But we, what you do for others lives on, you know, that's what goes on. That's the things that you do that are unselfish, the good that you put in the lives of the others. 
that is the part of life that continues, you know? So whether that's you passing that through your kids or through your friends or <clears throat> the people that you affect positively, um, those are the things that, you know, when, when I, when I die, which we're all going to at some point, sadly, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that everything good that I had inside of me, everything that I've learned, all the, all the good stuff that I was able to extract in this life, I would like to be able to pass that along to all of you somehow, you know, I would like to make sure that everyone is able to reap whatever benefit there can possibly be from my existence. Um, you know, and then I can, you know, it's like shedding that outer, that outer layer, like the opposite of the snake, you know, like <laughs> snakes shed their skin while I want to shed. I guess it's part of the reason I do this podcast is maybe you guys can take something positive away from it at least. Um, and speaking of football, I did have a, a fitness assessment yesterday. So I live in this really cool building. I live in the building of my dreams. I, I live in a building that when I was a kid, I can't imagine living in a cooler building uh, in New York City than I do. And it's not a brag. It's an accomplishment for, for hard work. And uh, one of the, we have this like basically division one facility downstairs, uh, athletic facility. <clears throat> and one of the things that they offer is a free complimentary fitness assessment. So I took them up on it yesterday. And this lady, it was so cool to, to make the connection with this personal trainer. She, dude, I, I'm not going to say her name. Well, Christy, I'll say, right. And uh, super cool lady she she's my age she swam actually for uh florida state go seminoles oh, 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 oh. anyway she was a uh, she was one of the best swimmers in the world um she had a career ending injury uh or at least a, a, an injury that really held her back much like my knee we talked about her injuries but she was doing fantastic things there at Florida State. She um, she went on later to train with Michael Phelps and you know Olympic caliber swimmers in Baltimore, Maryland. I guess there's a big swimming community in Baltimore. Maybe Baltimore is like the swimming capital, like uh, the way that uh, New York is for comedians. Anyway, we were talking about my my physical fitness at age 32. We did this entire body scan where we measured my body fat. We it measured out like my muscle to fat ratio in different parts of my body, um, and we did an analysis on the way that my my kinesthetics work, like when I'm jumping and doing step ups. You know, because of my knee that was injured several years ago, she had a ton of really positive things to say and a couple like slight corrections that I hadn't thought of that I'm that I need to incorporate in my training, but I was pleasantly surprised. I, I my body fat was at like four percent um when I was at Mizzou. And I thought that after I started playing, I felt like my body fat has to be like twenty percent right now. I was pleasantly surprised it was actually ten percent. So I'm a lot closer. She explained that I could use some, you know, about 10 pounds of muscle uh, and just get rid of maybe one or 2% body fat. So just gain a little bit of muscle uh, and just, you know, keep uh, building the explosiveness without damaging my knee. Um, but she, when I told her that I was, you know, starting to get back in shape and actually considering playing football again and testing the waters, it, it really got her excited. Uh, and, uh, and, it, it was a really cool, uh, it was cool sitting down with her and kind of like talking about all this stuff. She was, you know, friends with a bunch of uh, the football players at Florida State. She, uh, you know, so definitely kind of a cool connection to have. And, you know, just I'm thankful to have this building here. It's a dream come true. This is why I actually moved into this building. And if you guys watch any of our Midwest Sketch Bandits videos, there was a video that we made uh, at a gym. <laughs> and that was that was the gym here at this building. So. That's the latest on the football training. I was sick for a couple of weeks, but this last week and a half, I have been getting back into it. So my body is starting to get the engines turned back on. I did squat earlier this week. Uh, the glutes are taut is what I'm trying to say. 
the glutes are tight. The mind is strong. I'm watching a lot of football. I'm, I'm, I'm immersed in football and entertainment and each fuels the other. It's an interesting thing. Electromagnets. It's an electromagnetic force that is uh, transpiring. <laughs> Excuse the cough. What the heaven, guys? Uh, anyway, so let's move on. Uh, let's talk about other sports, and then we'll get into what is going on in the world and take it from there. You guys are so cool for sticking through all of this fun freaking stuff. You're really making me excited here. Uh, the Cardinals, St. Louis Cardinals, won last night. They beat Atlanta. It was a do-or-die game. It was uh, the last game of the series. They're in the playoffs, as as you probably know already. And in the first inning, they scored 10 runs. That is something I didn't even know was possible. I don't even think that's ever happened in the history of baseball. Maybe it has, but if it has, I haven't heard of it. I, when I saw that, I thought it was a joke, right? It, it sounded exaggerated. Um, but, wow, unbelievable. So I'm repping the Cardinals shirt right now as you guys can see um i'm excited for st louis they always seem to pull it off in october they're always in the mix they have an unbelievable program them and the yankees have more world championships than any other team and they're both still in it so it'll be interesting and that'd be cool to see a, a cardinals yankees uh pennant uh time will tell we're getting closer right uh the nhl is in the the thick of it now the blues won their first game at home recently, uh, a couple games in now. I want to see a Rangers game at Madison Square Garden. Jessica's been saying she wants to go see one. We are uh, friends, and we're not friends with benefits, if you guys are curious. Uh, we're actually – I'm withholding the wee-wee from her right now, but we are on great terms. We're, we're continuing to strengthen our friendship. We are living together. we got a good symbiotic relationship. Uh, I am rotating the crops with other women. <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous <laughs> to hear myself say that out loud. Uh, she broke up with me, though, guys, and uh, we're making this situation work right now. It's on the table. We're we're cool about it. You know, I had a little episode in Chicago with a with a lady, and uh, Jessica never listens to my podcast, but she listened to that last one to see if I'd give away any juice <laughs> on that chick in Chicago. So, uh, yeah, I met, 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 uh, had, a, had a lovely time with a, a damsel in distress in uh, Shy City uh, after the wedding. And uh, that's not for your eardrums, guys. All righty then. Anywho, uh, did you guys know I'm a tutor now? Anyway, that's random. We'll, we'll get back to that another time. So back to uh, sports. The NBA, guys. So there's some game in Hong Kong or something of that nature. Somebody said something, one of the players said something or, or coaches about supporting uh, the anti-government the anti -government protest that has been going on there to, to support human rights. And it actually created a frenzy. There was a little bit of uh, some friction that transpired. And uh, yeah, it's worth uh, doing a Google search. Uh, some of these news updates, I, I'm not fully informed on. I'm just going to read the headlines to you because I'm lazy. But uh, they're catchy headlines. <laughs> and you can decide for yourself. Ah, I heard about that, you know, if you want to do more research on it. But something about NBA in Hong Kong and some somebody saying something political outside the scope of basketball that actually created some havoc and a little bit of uh, testy waters over there. There was a press conference, and uh, one of the ladies uh, – I was watching this video on Twitter. One of the ladies said something like, are you going to be – after after the backlash, are you going to ever be making political comments again – Somebody stepped in and was like, hey, you can't be asking those types of questions. And one of the basketball players pled the fifth. I, you know, pleading the fifth is uh, that's a, that's an American right. It's not necessarily a right anywhere else um, legally, right? So keep in mind, the United States is pretty awesome because we have things like the Fifth Amendment and a lot of the amendments, uh, in my opinion, freedom of speech, things like that. You say that stuff, you, you can't speak your mind in a place like China. Uh, it's a communist country. Uh, you speak your mind, you, you end up getting shot in the face sometimes uh, in, in, in a place like that. So just just uh, count your blessings, guys, if you live in, in, a, in a free country. And uh, if you don't, I'm going to send some blessings that way if you feel 
like you're living in fear or that you're wanting to get out. So uh, there was an NFL player that got in a car crash today. Um, did not sound good. I, uh, I didn't see the guy's name, but uh, never good. I think he was in critical condition. Uh, he, it looks like he's going to live, but, you know, that stuff's always – it's crazy. I mean, it, it, all, it all can end not just your football career, but life uh, just with a snap of the fingers. Um, so uh, there was another NFL football player that was requesting to be traded. So I guess this is becoming a trend now. I guess it's becoming okay. You know, common day where people are just like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm going to do the opposite of Walter Payton. You know, Walter Payton didn't actually, I don't think he wanted to be drafted by Chicago when they first uh, drafted him. I'm not sure if that was his number one choice. It was cold in the winters there, but you know what? Walter Payton, sucked it up and was a man and dealt with all the bullshit, you know? How about guys like Marcus Allen who had an entire career sitting on the bench because of what was the the owner of the Raiders? Al, uh, he's no longer here on earth. He passed away, but Marcus Allen didn't request to be traded like uh, Antonio Brown. And I don't know. It's just, it's an interesting, you know, it's, it's just, we live in a free country, right? So I guess I'd be a hypocrite if I said they don't have the right to exercise that, but it's just, it's, 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 it's unique to see that type of mentality where players are being more vocal about stuff, you know, I guess taking more ownership and saying whether or not they want to be with a team. I mean, Hey, it's a two way street, right? I guess it, it is a relationship at the end of the day and it takes both parties to be on board. So, uh, I wanted to play something for you guys that I thought was really funny. I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but I'm going to try. Uh, my my ex girlfriend Jessica, I interviewed her, and I just I asked her. I said, Jessica, you know who's your favorite athlete, right? And it was so funny to me to see her response. Um, so yeah, I think. Uh, I think I'm gonna play this freaking for you guys. Let's see, videos, videos on my iPad. Who would be my favorite athlete? Let's see here. Here we go. I'm gonna play this for you guys. It's pretty funny. Your favorite athlete of all time. Oh, um, other than Michael Droid, it would have to be, um. <laughs> Hold on, wait, let me think. Okay, it's going to be football. I'm going to go with football. Okay. And I'm going to say... Sorry, I got to go. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, that's just, uh, she's a funny chick, you know? Probably the funniest girl I've ever met in my life. I think she's a thousand times funnier than the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. There was a time when Jessica came home from work. She was excited. She had like a, you know, like when people say they use the term as a kid, like, oh, yeah, I'm hyper right now. And they're like acting all weird or whatever. Jessica comes home and she jumps into my arms. I'm like, yo, she just assumed that I'm going to catch her. You know, just no, didn't even, I had no choice but to catch her. Right. Because we, it's a hardwood floor. I had no choice but to catch her. And I'm like, don't, Jessica, like, what are you doing? I like my, I'm not even like. I just got up from sitting all day. Like, I don't want to hurt my back. And then she runs to the other side of the apartment and then she starts sprinting at me. I'm like, oh my gosh, she does it again. Right. And I'm like, I had no choice but to catch her. And I'm laughing and I'm about to drop her because I'm laughing so hard. And she keeps doing it. And it was, I don't know, maybe it was one of those you had to be there things, but I was crying. I was literally, like, I, I don't know. It was just the fact that she would just trust me that I'm going to catch her. Like, I like no, no fear. Just <laughs> so, so ridiculous. She likes to buy and sell stuff on Amazon. She'll go to Chinatown and buy something from like some person on the street and then turn around and sell it. She'll turn around and sell it on eBay. And she like, it's, uh, it's like kind of bad, you know, like it's kind of one of those deals where it's like, she doesn't say that it's brand new. She, but she doesn't say it's used either. 
and she doesn't say that it's the authentic, but she doesn't say it's fake either. So she just leaves it up to the to the viewer. <laughs> like, buyer beware, guys. There's a term out there. <laughs> buyer beware. Um, definitely one of the most unique people I've ever met in my life. Uh, and I just, she's like a, you know, she was hurt when she came into this relationship and she had like a broken wing and uh, I always make the joke with her. We laugh about it that I nursed her back to health so she can fly around the nest now, go fly around, see what other guys are out there, fly back home. To, you know, it's, it's a very unique situation that we've got. Um, but nevertheless, what is going on in the world? That's We finally made it to the first part of my podcast, 50 minutes in. I am finally talking about what's going on in the world now. So today is actually Mental Health Day around the world. Did you guys know that? So shout out to the people that are taking uh, an active uh, approach to their mental health. Uh, there's no, uh, I think everyone should, you know, do a, do an eva- some sort of an evaluation. Uh, who knows? Maybe you get some free mental health uh, sessions through your job or your insurance allows you to speak with some sort of a therapist from time to time. I, I think therapy is like a really big thing. It's a lot bigger in New York than uh, in other places. My therapists are my friends and my family. So I apologize to them for letting me dump uh you know, whatever I need to talk about from time to time on them. I'm sure they would prefer me to hire a therapist from time to time, but I, I just, I, I prefer to just dump on my friends, but never, nevertheless being heard is important. And, uh, I think therapists, uh, therapy is uh, something that I encourage. There's no, um, there's no shame. If anything, you should be proud of it for taking an active uh, charge of your personal, taking a, a personal accountability for your mental health and going into, Getting help if you if you need or feel that it's helpful for you in any way, um, you know I, I respect. I, I've got people that I, one person that uh, is friends with me who went and saw a doctor today actually uh, to get some help because he was having some anxiety and it was uh, he needed uh, he needed some some help. So I loved knowing that he was seeking that and and, and taking an active approach. So. Shout out to Mental Health Day. Think about it. Good stuff. Maybe maybe you know somebody that could use that push or something. Maybe you can talk to them. Maybe you guys think I'm crazy, right, for doing a podcast and speaking into this microphone where anyone in the world can listen and watch me. <laughs> um, but, uh, I hey, I don't feel crazy, so I guess that's good. I don't know. Um, I guess what is the definition of crazy, you know? Is it an objective de- definition, right? Is is it subjective? Because uh, if you're crazy, it's kind of hard to to decide whether or not you're crazy uh, internally because it feels subjective when you're the one deciding. But objectively speaking, I don't know. And speaking of that, I still haven't seen the movie The Joker. Have you guys seen it? Uh, I heard great things. Definitely want to see it. I'm going to try to see it in the next couple of days. Uh, it's perfect for this time going into Halloween. I think it'll be pretty cool. Nevertheless, uh, what's going on? Can you guys believe that Donald Trump was cuckolding with Ukraine? I mean, that's crazy. I can't believe that they want to, you know, impeach this guy for cuckolding Ukraine. Uh, that's, uh, I, I don't know. You know, we're, we're making progress on this. Uh, when I say we, uh, there is. I don't know. You guys think he's going to be impeached? I think he'll be impeached, but will he be removed from office? That's always hard to do. I mean, Bill Clinton was impeached, but he wasn't removed from office. And, you know, colluding with Ukraine or, or talking to them about trying to get dirt on the Bidens, is that the worst? Is that the worst thing ever? I don't know. When I think DT, I don't think Donald Trump. I think Darnell Terrell I mentioned him a couple podcasts back. But the big stuff, whether or not he gets impeached, is uh, right now what's trending is uh, he pulled out of defending the Kurds. Um, I guess wants to save some money, says that we're fighting their battle or whatever. Uh, and there's already fights breaking out. Uh, Turkey's invading. Uh, people are upset. They feel like that they're being abandoned. The Kurds have been with us for a long time. Apparently, his his excuse to soften the blow was that they didn't help us during World War II. So that's the dumbest reason I've ever heard in my life for that is so irrelevant now. You know, that's like saying 
like if if I had the opportunity to work with somebody today, that's like saying that when I was in elementary school, I, I don't want to work with that guy anymore because in elementary school we had a, you know, he didn't give me some of his gummy bears at lunch. You know what I mean? Now, obviously world war two is much bigger magnitude than a lunch fight at school. But what I'm saying is that was decades and decades. It was a long time ago. I don't think the people in office in that country are even relevant anymore and not relevant, but, but active, like he's not dealing with, with people that were, part of that we're around during world war two he's dealing with people today uh so i think that 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 excuse is heinous and it just shows what an idiot that he can be from time to time um i heard something about iranian women not being allowed to to go to soccer games which is really sad i think there was some protesting going on about that and just bad consequences for a woman i don't know it's it's crazy. We still live in a time period where there are parts of the world where women um, are viewed as second class citizens. It's, um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, nevertheless, though, I should read some of his tweets. I feel like Donald Trump's tweets are absolutely um, non presidential. They're so not classy. They're so like, is the president really tweeting this right now? Um, I love how I'm going to pull up his Twitter account right now. Um, it always astounds me to, to go to this because first of all, he only follows 47 people, right? He's the president of our country. He's only going to follow 47 way to be a, a, a leader of the people, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> What is that noise? Oh, it's my Gatorade. Oh, let's see here. You know what? I think this is a stupid idea to read his tweets. I'm just going to tell you what I remember seeing that I thought was ridiculous. Um, he said that somebody sucks at Fox News on Twitter, right? He, he said whoever does the uh, something at Fox News sucks. I mean, it's very, very nice, Donald Trump, to, to say that someone sucks. Uh, I used to talk like that in elementary school, and the teacher immediately told me I can't do that anymore. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, what else? He said that uh, – oh, yeah, they're, they're talking with China right now about this whole tariff war. And he's uh, he said, I think China wants to make a, a deal. The question is, do I want to make a deal? It's like he's got to throw in that he's got the upper hand there, that he feels that he has the upper hand just to kind of kind of like cattle prod, you know what I mean? Just to kind of like show like, Hey, I'm in control here. I don't know. I think it's uh there's a difference between creating the illusion that you're in control and actually being in control. I think he tries to create the illusion that he's in control or maybe he's under the delusion that he's in control. Uh, nevertheless, though, I think it's more professional to know when you're in control and not have to always, you know, not have to always flex like you, like you are. Right. But I don't know. The art of war is an interesting book and, uh, there's all kinds of different philosophies on, on, on it. You know, um, they say the, the battle is won before it's ever fought. Positioning is half the battle too. So sometimes positioning is posturing. Um, maybe he's just posturing to prevent as a part of, uh, as a part of his positioning, whatever. All right. Um, snakes and gators, guys. He might be filling them up with that. You guys hear about that? And that gives me a boner. Uh, maybe they'll put some snakes and gators uh, around the uh, around the wall of Mexico. I mean, great stuff. Great stuff. I don't even know where that came from. Did he actually say that? Who knows? Let's move on because I don't really care anymore to talk about Trump. Um. Oh, last thing I'll say is. Uh, People are still trying to get his tax returns. I have a feeling his tax returns. I think the reason he doesn't want to show his tax returns is not because he did anything illegal. It's because he's embarrassed to show that he's a fraud. You know, I think that he doesn't want the world to know that he's actually not very successful and he's either in debt or was net neutral or net negative like for several years. Um, I think that's the re I think he. I don't think he's worried that people will find out that he did anything illegal. He's worried about the perception of his strength and the perception 
that people have of him because they they view him as like financially successful. I think he's a fraud and probably owes money. And uh, I, I bet you his net worth is negative, and that's that's the part that people uh, in, don't realize. And that's that's the true reason that I don't think he wants to give his tax returns out there. Uh, speaking of um, money, did you guys hear that Warren Buffett is predicting a stock market crash? He didn't, I didn't see a timeline for this, but his company has already, uh, Berkshire Hathaway has already cashed out of 60% of his portfolio. Uh, Warren Buffett's a smart dude. And, um, I'm not going to say just go by that, start cashing out. Uh, luckily I've cashed out of certain things. I'm not a hundred percent invested in stuff because I don't fully trust the stock market. I don't, I don't know if now is the best time to invest, even though the stock market appears to be doing well, there's always like an after effect or there, there oftentimes is, and who knows what the after effects will be. The future is very unclear right now. And I just, I don't know, even though the stock market appears on the surface to be doing fine, I am a little nervous. Uh, and Warren Buffett predicting this, kind of solidifies that for me. Now, uh, hopefully not everybody in the world listens to this podcast and gets afraid and sells tomorrow and then the stock market crashes. But I would recommend liquidating some things. <laughs> Always have enough to where if there's an emergency in the stock market crashed, that you're able to survive and live. I, I, I do think that. I mean, we've already been through one Great Depression uh, they are predicting, I've heard that a recession could be coming. Interest rates are unexpectedly dropping right now, which is good in some ways, but it's surprising. Um, it's surprising, right? So it's good if you're trying to buy a house. It's good if you're trying to buy something, you know, and put yourself in debt. But just, I don't know, the, 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 the waters ahead are a little foreign and a little uh unknown right now so i think being cautious would be wise that, that's my best advice being cautious would be would be wise so yeah I, I, i'm gonna use the same words that big daddy used when uh john stewart tried to propose to corinne in the movie big daddy uh, he goes you're not proposing are you well think about it you know so, so I guess to, to clarify what I mean by that, you're not going all in on the stock market, are you? Well, think about it, you know? You're not liquidating all your assets, are you? Well, think about it, you know? So, I don't know, just think about it is, is what I'm really trying to say. Um, we'll see if this trade war gets better. I mean, it could be billions of dollars in tariffs that uh, – uh, continue to go down if this war escalates this trade war uh, apparently we're having a potential trade war uh, on exports with europe too so now it's not just china but europe's getting in the mix with this trade thing i don't know uh, we'll see we'll see if you're as strong as your flex appears to be trump you know we'll find out uh you sure make it hard on yourself though bro you make it hard on yourself I don't think it's good to make people hate you and then try to do business with them. You know, people don't really, you know, people want to do business with people that they like. So uh, I don't think that uh, the approach of having the world turn their backs on you first and then trying to fix all the problems is necessarily the best way to go. But hey, to each his own, right? Uh, Bernie Sanders had a heart attack last week. Did you guys hear? So I, I, it doesn't seem to be serious because he's still running, but it is affecting a little bit of how he goes about his campaign. Uh, so I hope he's doing okay. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a little bit of a blow. Uh, Bernie's uh, Bernie's. Uh, so I saw a funny tweet about Bernie. They said, "If you really believe in uh, taking from the rich and giving to the poor, then why don't you follow people? <laughs> why don't you follow people back on Twitter?" <laughs> Cause he's got a ton of followers on Twitter, but doesn't follow them back. So that's an interesting uh, question to pose, which is if you really are about not profiting on the backs of others, why don't you, uh, why don't you follow your followers back? You know, if you really do care about their best interest, give them that, that one-to-one -one ratio, that follow for the follow. I don't know. Interesting, uh, funny tweet though. 
Uh, what else is in the news? Matt Lauer. You guys hear about this? Matt Lauer now? There's a woman out there trying to write a book about how they had an affair and all these things. And he came out and made a public long statement. Uh, he like went into detail about what happened to kind of defend himself. Here's the sad thing, guys, is the fact that he felt like he had to do that is sad. The reason I say that is he's got a family, right? This was an affair. And uh, he was having to go into like descriptive detail about having anal sex with this this woman he had a, an affair with. It's like, geez, man, you know, <laughs> that's sad. You know, I mean, I wonder how him and his wife are handling this. And uh, I don't know, maybe they, maybe his wife's into it. Maybe she wants to cuckold. I don't know. That would be interesting if if it actually turned his wife on. You know, and. Uh, <laughs> And she's like, yeah, let's do it again. And what if the deal breaker was not the wife, but it was the the woman trying to write the book, the woman trying to write the books like, no, I don't, I do not want to have sex again. I'm trying to write this book and get rich by throwing you under the bus. Uh, speaking of that, anybody out there lick anybody's butt ever? Butt licking is an interesting phenomenon. I, uh, I wonder if Matt Lauer licked this chick's butt, uh, there's something about bucket, butt licking that's a, it's like an animalistic instinct. You know, dogs sniff each other's butts. It's disgusting, but at the same time, like, I get, you know what I mean? Like, I get the, the thought, because I've licked a couple girls' butts, and even though it's, like, like hygienically, like, kind of stupid, there's something about just, like, licking a chick's butt that turns you on, turns me on at least. <laughs> If she's attractive, if I'm attracted to her. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's interesting, right? The butt licking phenomenon. I talk about, there was this girl I had, Just Benefits Maria. It's in my act. I talk about how I used to lick her butt. And uh, I didn't even, we didn't even like each other. We were just attracted to each other. You know, made me want to lick her butt even more. It was hot. She was, you know, it's like hate sex. Anyway, um, some woman received some sexual messages on an in-flight messenger on Virgin Airlines recently. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, sounds like it's, uh, not, not for a, a Virgin type airline, right? It sounds pretty sexual to me. That, uh, I know that's not that funny. Uh, but here's, here's something interesting and that's sad if they were unwarranted. I mean, nobody wants to receive uns, unwarranted sex stuff that's that's not okay you know i'm not making light of that uh but everyone handles stuff differently um my ex-girlfriend jessica actually received a dick pic airdropped to her on the subway once a stranger actually airdropped <laughs> a dick pic to her phone can you guys believe that people are actually doing that now i mean it was me that did it but can you believe that people are doing it that's how we met you know i was fishing and my bait was a nice stock dick pic photo. No, that was not me. I would not do that to strangers. Uh, I only send warranted dick pics, guys. And uh, if a dick pic has ever been sent from my phone unwarranted, it was it was done by accident. I do not send unwarranted stuff. I think it's rude and disrespectful. Um, yeah, Anthony Weiner. How about that guy, huh? Uh, sending dick pics. First time I heard that, I thought, wow, dick pics are... Uh, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And then uh, a couple of years later, I realized, hey, when you got a good stock photo and someone that is down to receive one, what's uh, what's what's terrible about dick pics? <laughs> if, to, if both parties are on board, right? All right, let's move on. Uh, did you guys know that kids can get away with vaping underage uh one of the reasons that a lot of kids vape or started to vape is because they could get away with it um you know they had to be more discreet about smoking in, in front of their parents because they don't want their parents so you can hide the smell from your parents there's no smoke and um sadly i think that that's one of the reasons that more teens were vaping the e-cigarettes that are causing deaths um, so sometimes by trying to hide from the truth, it creates more damage. Uh, and you know, here's a great example of vaping the anal sex that Matt Lauer had, right? The collusion with Ukraine, you know, just 
doing the wrong thing sometimes and maybe getting it, exposing that to the light when you do something wrong, maybe admitting to that instead of being uh, dishonest. I don't know. Stuff comes to the light. You know, I try to, people are going to find out that I, I licked girls butts at one point in my life. I may as well say it now and admit it. You know what I mean? Um, people are going to find out at some point that I've sent dick pics may as well admit it now rather than pretending to be perfect. Um, you know, anyway, what else? Uh, yeah. So apparently they pinned down some brand that bootlegs these, uh, these vaping things. And, um, I don't know. My girlfriend is always hitting some pen. She, she, she loves the vaping. So, so luckily hers is different than the e-cigarette. She doesn't smoke the e-cigarette. It's more of the, the CBD or marijuana stuff. I don't know if I'm supposed to say all this about her. She might get mad at me for, I mean, this is just one of my ex-girlfriends. There's no girl in particular that I'm talking about right now. <laughs> I'll keep it, in, keep it just as anonymous as I can. Uh, last thing, uh, last week I was talking about seeing like stats and, and perspectives. What was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about how statistics uh, are not always accurate, right? You get these statistics, Fox News or whatever. It's like I want to see some accurate stats. I don't. I don't want to see this like accurate. This cross section bullshit stats. I want to see God stats on things. I want to see all perspectives, right? I want to know. I want to see the Bruce Wayne's like Batman equipment where he uses the the sonar and radar from cell phones to see everything and create true visual live data. I want to see my life on a 3D flash drive. You know. Did I tell you guys that already? I can't remember, but I was talking to my friends about how cool it would be if after in the afterlife, if uh, you know, if you met God and you, you, you know, he was like, he's a three flat driver of your life from your perspective. Yeah, you know? how crazy would that be? <clears throat> you know, how would you view yourself from different perspectives? You know, Thank you. So, happy Yom Kippur to the Jewish uh, community. Um, I was on Snapchat. There was one girl that I know. She's Jewish, and she's like, "Oh, proper." She's like, "Today's Yom Kippur, and as a result, I'm gonna watch Man in the High Castle," which I thought was uh, actually kind of funny and uh, interesting. Definitely a very, very interesting show we've talked about in the past. It's been so long since I played video games, but I did play a little Call of Duty World War II uh, the other night. Speaking of World War II and the Man in the High Castle. Game's awesome. Uh, what else is going on in the world? iPhone 11 came out. You get anybody out there get the iPhone 11? Hey yo! I heard I heard there's two versions of the iPhone 11. There's like a cheap version and an expensive version. And the cheaper version is less good. Like it's like not as good as the iPhone X, like the regular X. So you gotta like know which version you got. But they got three cameras. I figure you know. I bet those things take some really nice dick pics. You know. Uh, I think the iPhone 11 three camera thing is only useful for two things, sending dick pics and vlogging V L O G, which I'm going to start doing. I, I bought some vlogging equipment. I'm going to do it on uh, my two camera phone. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I, I, I didn't get the three cameras. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know I needed to get three cameras to vlog. All right, moving on. <laughs> Halloween's coming up. You freaking putzes. You guys excited? Are you going to dress up? What are you going to do for Halloween? Um, Halloween is is uh, is one of my favorite times of the year. Hocus Pocus, right? I was in this costume store the other day in Soho. I was just killing time after going to get some, some vlogging equipment from Best Buy. And uh, I saw this Harry Potter garb. I saw my, my Hufflepuff my house Hufflepuff basically like costume and then uh, Bette Midler's uh, witch. They have like a Bette Midler character. What is it? Uh, something Sanderson sister. Uh, I might, I'm, I'm either going to dress up as Bette Midler's character in Hocus Pocus for Halloween, or I'm going to dress up as a Hufflepuff and I want to get like a good costume. You know what I mean? There's like a $200 like authentic Harry Potter costume, Hufflepuff from 
from the actual Harry Potter store, you know, like authentic. I don't want to get this watered down bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, or maybe I'll be St. Michaelis Cage, you know? Maybe I'll be St. Michael for Halloween. Anyway, um, speaking of that, there was a, I did a show last night and there was an, a guy in the crowd who was very talkative, very funny, this dude from India. He had this unique hat on. It looked like, uh, you remember, whatever hat that that guy in Aladdin wore, and I, I know it's two different, I know that guy's not, I know Aladdin is not Indian, um, but it looked like that hat that the little monkey wore, right? And he was from India. He kept on interrupting our sets, but he was actually so funny that it, w it was fun. Like I didn't mind. And he, at one point, somehow the topic of God came up with one of the comedians, and uh, and this dude goes, "I'm atheist," and he meant I'm atheist, right? He said he's 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 atheist. So that became like a theme of the show, uh, and it was very interesting. He said. Faith is a gift that he has yet to receive. And it really resonated with me because that's super deep. You know, I was like, yo, I think that's too deep for this comedy show. <laughs> like, I thought it was pretty cool. And it was a very honest answer. And I love that, you know. So the one thing I'll always say is the last thing I ever want to do is be preachy. I, I think it's pretty clear what my beliefs are. But I would never want to push that upon anyone because your belief has to come from within. And I loved that he said that faith is a gift that he has yet to receive. Some people may not want to receive. If you're atheist, you may not want to receive the gift of faith. And if you are atheist, you might also want to receive the gift of faith. And um, and this dude said that he, he did want to receive the gift of faith. I asked him, so I did my Nicolas Cage bit from City of Angels. Uh, and... Um, it was really cool. We, we made friends and he was very supportive. And, uh, I think, I, I, yeah, I think I made a new friend, you know, he, he seems like a really good guy with a good heart and he's searching and, uh, it was really cool. It was cool to meet him. So Harry Potter, uh, we talked about, there was a news update. Why, why, what would have happened if Lily would have chosen Snape instead of James Potter? And speaking of love, right. Uh, it was really cool. Like you can't hate Snape because even to the very end, uh, he always loved Lily. And sometimes, um, sometimes, the, sometimes love is about letting go, you know? And, uh, sometimes you can't have what you want. Sometimes you can love somebody with all your heart as Snape did. And no matter what you have to, you have to be strong. You got to be strong as a mofo, right? And his do was so strong, Snape was, that he wrote it out to the very end and never stopped loving her um, and uh, did what he needed to do to, to show his love to her uh, unselfishly. So Snape is a badass. So not all Slytherins are evil, guys. My mom took the, the test for Pottermore and got Slytherin. So I know a couple Slytherins, and uh, Slytherins are uh, they're cunning. But uh, if you think all Slytherins are evil, you got to be careful because you're, you're giving in and you're kind of giving in to evil right there, guys, by, by judging others and thinking that they're evil, you know? So it doesn't mean you need to go along with the Slytherins if they're doing bad things and, you know, and start doing those things as well. But do not automatically just write them off. Don't write off the, the bad kids. Don't, dry, don't write off the kids that you think. You know what I'll, I will say without being a uh, – too crazy here or preachy is the kids that like grow up and get in trouble a lot in class <clears throat> you know it's it's interesting how society will they'll, they'll cast type you or they'll if you're a good kid you can get away with doing bad things if you're a kid who always gets in trouble you can get in trouble easier right both in the classroom and in society and do not count out the criminals be like uh you guys seen that movie les miserables don't count out jean valjean you know what i mean don't count out the the, the jean valjeans of the world don't count out the the cat women's right give it up for the bruce waynes out there who who see the good in cat who sees the good in, in selena kyle who sees the a person who wants to start fresh but they can't you know right so 
definitely some cool stuff. Somebody offered me a weird part re recently. We're talking about Halloween and, you know, it's kind of a fun night, scary movies, all these things. Uh, somebody reached out to me. I get these offers now on, on, on people reach out to me to, to offer me parts sometimes and things. Now, somebody reached out to me with this random part and they said, I want, I, I, I could see you playing this part in my, in my film. Uh, and you would be this guy who's like a devil in training and, uh, you're like trying to like get this one person. So I was like, I'm gonna have to reject that, bro. I appreciate you reaching out, but <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Like, I know it's acting, but you know, I don't want to be associated with that or embody that, you know, in any way. So I, I appreciate that, but I'm going to pass. I'm a creature of light. All right. Um, so Speaking of uh, one last thing on Halloween, which I think is really interesting. I met these two ladies and they are from, is it Transylvania? Or oh, it's either Transylvania or one of those far away. Like what, what's the name of the place that uh, Adam Sandler made a movie with the, the you know, it's like the, that far place, Transylvania, like the vampires or whatever. Anyway, I met these two very attractive twins downstairs in that workout facility that I told you guys about. And uh, wow, Michaela and Gabriella, super, super seductive, very attractive. They're teaching dance classes. And they got this show on Halloween at the Playboy Club. I told you guys I've been there before here in New York for that one event like a year or two ago with my buddy Brian. And they're putting on this show there. And it's like a Halloween, like spooky, like, I don't know, like these chicks seem bad and good, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but good at the heart, which is, you know, what all boils down into in the end. So Gabriella and Michaela, Michaela or whatever. So uh, I might have to go check that out on Halloween. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's interesting, super, super intriguing. I'll have to get back to you guys on that uh, and tell you more about that event because uh as, as halloween gets closer I'll, I'll talk about it next week again so what else what's going on in the comedy world um so that mindy girl from the office she she so an update she was almost pushed out of a producer's credit on the office so um that was cool to see that she wasn't pushed out uh there was some moving on there was some hollywood agent that had some wrongful termination lawsuit of, uh over defecation uh, defamation over defecation. I guess there was a rumor or something saying that he pooped in some bathroom and they thought it was him and they like fired him for pooping. And so I don't know what it was, but it's either the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life or it's bad karma. Uh, but again, you can never assume bad karma either. Right. Cause that's judgmental. Uh, do you remember when I was talking about, uh, that just a few minutes ago, like giving people the benefit of the doubt. You just never really know unless you have all the data, all the information, like Bruce Wayne's sonar, right? Only until then are you in a position to actually be able to see. And, uh, you know, there's 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 a, a tribe of, of indigenous people in Africa that they believe there's, there's a river that people swim. There's alligators in this river and they'll swim across it without fear. Uh, and they basically, uh, someone was interviewing them saying, why do you guys, you know, why do you guys swim across this river knowing that there's alligators in there? And the guy casually said, and they translated, he said, oh, I, it's because the alligators only eat bad people, which I'm going to just say right now, I don't like that mindset. Like, I appreciate like not having fear. Like, that's cool. Like, I respect that Jedi mindset, but you're also being judgmental because, you're just assuming that karma is right always, you know, you're like, you're just assuming that if someone like, <laughs> you're just assuming that like, if someone, you know, swims over there and they've, if they get eaten by an alligator, then they deserve it, you know? And that's, I don't know. I, I think that's judgmental. I, I think that that's, that's pretty narrow minded in my opinion, but who knows? Maybe it's true though. Right. Who knows? Uh, what else is going on? Robert De Niro was suing some assistant. I guess the assistant was like sitting on the clock, watching a lot of Netflix videos and just kind of like getting paid. And he found out and, and they like turned around and tried to sue him. 
it's just, just to turn around and try to sue him for a bigger lawsuit for you know discriminating her based on the fact that she's a woman for other stuff so i mean that sounds horrible right i don't know you hear stuff like that it's like do i even want money like that's sounds heinous to me you know like someone taking advantage of the system and then trying to flip it over on them i don't know i don't know all this the story but i'm already going to say if someone's if someone is sitting on the clock watching netflix they're doing something wrong you know so um don't be oh and if you if you're one of those people yourselves that like i think it's human nature to want to if you're in a salary job where there's no incentive to like work harder, like if you're not in sales, there's a lot of people out there that try to like, <laughs> I think 99% of people out there probably like watch videos on the clock if they can and just like wait for the time to pass so they can go home. But I guess don't turn around and then try to sue your boss afterwards. Like that's on you. You know what I mean? Like if, if you get caught for that, the lesson is like you might not be in the right job, right? Like, the lesson is, is go, go start your own company or, or go follow your dreams. I don't think you're in the right place if you're, if you're not engaged and uh, you're just kind of like going through the motions. I don't know. Maybe I'm being judgmental there. So forgive me. I, I don't, I don't want you to be eaten by an alligator. If you do that guys, you know, I don't want you to, <laughs> if you do that. So what else? Uh, Alec Baldwin bought some fake tickets to the statue of Liberty by accident recently which is hilarious to me uh there's people all over the city selling these scams if you ever go to times square it's it is literally the most bait and switch infested place that i've ever been to in my life so it doesn't surprise me that alec baldwin um you know is, he's a smart dude though so i feel like if it's going to happen to somebody it is surprising for someone who's been in new york as long as he has for that to happen to him but anything can anything can happen by Zeus. Pete Davidson was in the uh, like mentioned in SNL. I guess he wasn't in the first episode or two, and people were wondering what's up. And so this article, who gives a shit? You know, I, I assume he's still on SNL, or they would have made an announcement. He's probably doing a movie or something. I don't know. Pete Davidson's doing his thing. Who knows? Who gives a shit? You know, Kevin Hart appears to be getting better. He was in a car accident. He's getting physical therapy. Uh, now he's talking about getting back on his feet to promote for Jumanji. Uh, always good to see that. You know what I mean? It's always heartbreaking when someone uh, has to overcome that. Uh, I have a friend who was in a car accident uh, not long ago in St. Louis. Jen, hi. Um, hope you're having a good week and you're feeling better. Um, you know, it's uh, it's always encouraging to hear about people who are overcoming these uh, you know these challenges that they're faced with. Right. Um, so, um, what else is going on? Taylor Swift was the SNL guest singer, uh, this last week and I didn't get to see it yet, but her new album is awesome guys. I really recommend it. Love her is a cool song. Um, and I'm super, super excited to, you know, to be able to listen to that while I masturbate. All right. Uh, the monologue for that, episode i forget the lady's name but she did really well and her monologue was very sexual but it was very funny so you guys should go check out uh episode two of snl that monologue at least it was it was pretty uh pretty racy there she was getting loose um i talked about how i still need to go see the joker let's give it up for Rafael, uh, joaquin rafael phoenix uh i was talking to my buddy john recently he told me i need to see uh, stand by me because river phoenix his brother who had passed away later in life uh was a big star in that movie and i've heard big things about it so i need to see that i still need to see the last of the mohicans i heard that that's a really good one i like uh dances with wolves so maybe the last of the mohicans will be a good one to see um i'm gonna read a couple of my favorite tweets for the week real quick i think that these are fun I know this podcast is lasting forever and forgive me. I try to keep it short, but you know what? I'm having fun. We're talking, whatever. Right. So, uh, one of my favorite t tweets, this one came from the pitch. Uh, the tweet was ever since I saw the movie it, I still get a little freaked out whenever I see a clown chewing a child's arm off. That's hilarious. Right. I mean, that's, that's good stuff. That's juicy. It's uh, it's got a good little twist there. 
Uh, next tweet, I thought this one was funny. It was from Men's Humor. It says, Mike is short for bicycle and bike is short for bikel. I thought that that was really funny. Uh, very cool. So if you guys want to call me bicycle or bikel, feel free. Uh, finally, uh, here's a tweet from Ramp Capital. Uh, this is my favorite one. This is the, actually two more. Uh, here, I'll start with the other one. This one is from Blaine Capage, B L A I N E C A P A T C H. I don't know him, but at Blaine Capage, it says Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross implies the existence Glenn Gary, Glenn Rachel. I thought that was pretty funny. If you guys know Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, there's a movie with Alec Baldwin. Speaking of that mofo, uh, years ago, he plays this really cocky, confident um, sales executive talking about giving people golden leads, and he chews this sales team out. Uh, and it's just a huge prick to them. So uh, you guys will have to check out that movie if you haven't seen it. Final tweet that I think was funny uh, is from Ramp Capital LLC. The tweet is, thinking about dressing up as a sexy whistleblower for Halloween. I thought that that was pretty funny. Made me laugh. And I'd, I'm i down. I'm down to see uh, I'm, I'm down to see you dressed up as a sexy whistleblower. Uh I love sexy whistleblowers. I love sexy anything. <laughs> I love sexy twins from Transylvania, you know? So what else is going on? In, in We can move on from what's going on in the world to what's going on in my comedy world. Uh, I released a, a little nugget of stand-up on my Instagram account. If you guys follow it, you can see that I put a little stand-up comedy out there. It's a little dirtier than usual just to kind of give you guys a little you know, wet your palate a little bit, you know, just kind of keep it juicy, make sure that you know that I still have the ability to drop the hammer on that. Everybody likes a little dirty from now on, you know, hit, hit, hit them with a little dark humor. You know, if you, if you want to seduce a woman, hit, hit her with a little dark and dirty humor and get those panties wet, you know. <laughs> um, what else? It feels easier for me to get uh, Twitter followers lately, which is really cool. I guess it's like picking up a little momentum. I don't know, but it feels good. Uh, maybe it's because I'm constantly tweeting at Bette Midler about ho Hocus Pocus. Um, I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. By the way, can we please give it up for the mole on the main character's neck? I love that mole. I'm surprised they didn't like incorporate that more into the movie Hocus Pocus. You know, I'm surprised that I feel like I feel like a real witch would use that mole for something. Is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know what the witch would use it for, but like she's got a jar with that mole or a jar of moles, I feel, and and uses it in one of the potions hidden in that book behind that that all-seeing eye or whatever it is. I, I think that was that should have been like the first thing that they addressed in the movie is that mole on his neck. Like I, if I was if I was Bet Midler, which I might be for Hall Halloween, and if I was in her shoes and you know I was trying to, you know, do what she was doing to that that young girl to, 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 to look younger. Uh, and, and her brother came in to save her or whatever. I think I'm getting my story mixed up, but, uh, I'd say, okay, you're trying to save your sister. Well, if you let me get that mole off your neck, you can leave with your sister and, and we can call it square quid pro quo, you know, give me that mole and we'll call it square. <laughs> That's what I would do if I was Bette Midler. Uh, anyway, moving on. What else is going on in my comedy world? My buddy Dom Leonelli, he's at New York Comedy Festival next month coming up. Uh, very excited for him. It's a huge deal. It's going to be at Caroline's. We've been hanging out a lot lately because I'm back to 100% of my time being put into entertainment. And um, good dude. You know, Dom, we've been working our butts off. He's been developing his YouTube channel as have I, not just with our sketches, but uh, not just with our my podcast, but like just making different videos, making content to put out there. So he's been busting his ass. Go support him. I've been, I, I saw him perform at Caroline's over the weekend. Um, and we're excited. You know, we're, we're having another season come out with our Midwest sketch bandit stuff. Uh, you can check us out on IMDB. That's an update. That's really cool. We're on IMDB now. So I got a couple more little credits going on. It gives me a, makes me look sexy. You know what I mean? It gives me a little bit more clout, you know, nah. You know, no big deal. Just, uh, you know, climbing the ranks in IMDb, whatever. You know, it's like having a bowl ring, you know. <laughs> uh, the bowl ring no longer drops panties for me, so I got to figure out ways to, to make it happen on IMDb. All right. Uh, what else? 
we hung out last week. We went to uh, Maddie Smith's um, birthday party. She's doing really well in the comedy scene. She's dating my buddy Andrew Chavone. Uh, so it was great to see a ton of comedians out um, last Friday night celebrating her birthday. Uh, a ton of comedians were there. You know, very, very cool to see so many people continuing to have success in the New York comedy scene. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's encouraging, you know, people, people sacrifice their lives to, uh, pursue comedy. It's not glamorous. They give up money. They give up their health. They give up the luxuries of life to try and make it big. And it's just encouraging when you see people that you've known who have been out here for a long time, continuing to make headway in the industry. And it's, it's encouraging when it, when it happens to you as well. You know, it, I feel I'm getting little pieces of traction here and there one step at a time. And it's just, I'm, I'm thankful for it. I, I'm appreciative. And a big part of it is, is obviously <clears throat> people, right? I can't be successful if people don't like my comedy. So you guys, uh, my audience, my, my friends, my fans, my family, my support. So you guys are all a part of that and it's, it's greatly appreciated. Um, it's helping propel the, the engines forward, right? You guys are the wind under my wings, baby. Um, and, uh, had a great show the other night, had a great show last night. Uh, New York film festival was last week and I was not a part of that. Uh, I'm excited to be vlogging soon. So just keep, uh, keep, uh, an eye out for some of that stuff. Hey, I have Adobe now guys. I have all the Adobe suite. So I'm super excited about that. I didn't even know how to use it. It's so advanced. I probably, I have it. And I don't even know if I'll be able to use it cause I don't know how to to do that stuff. But if you guys need something, ask me, maybe you can hire me to do uh, an Adobe thing or, or teach me how to use it. One of the two, teach me how to Douglas. Um, trying to make my own marketing stuff, I guess. Uh, but also I'm, I'm tutoring. So if you guys need math tutors, feel free to, uh, Feel free to hire me. You know, I'm, I'm tutoring this high school student to help preparing for the ACT. I tried tutoring for chemistry and I wanted to rip the hairs out of my head and I, I was not a help. But when it comes to math, there's just something about my math brain that clicks. I guess it's the fact that I'm part Filipino. I don't know being part Asian, whatever it is, math has always come natural and we'll go through these math like practice tests and I'll just fly through it. I don't, Hey, I'll be honest. I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not. Right. And um, one of the things that I am not good at is, uh, reading, right? I'm not a good reader, but I am very good at math. So hire me for math. Also, if you want to hire me to do a, a private event for you, whether it's a birthday or if your company, uh, has an event coming up and you need a comedian or an MC or a host doing a lot of, I'm doing a lot of shows where I do comedy and that I MC and host, which is really cool. So I can host an event. If you're having a bingo night and you want to have intercourse afterwards, you know, the intercourse will, will happen naturally. But if you, if you need somebody to host, we'll, we'll do that. You know, I'll host it for you. We'll have, we'll have a good time. Um, other than that, um, what's going on in my life before I wrap it up, before I wrap it up, before I, you got to strap it up before you smack it up, guys, you know? And uh, I think those were the, the words from the wise Missy Elliott. I don't know if you guys are f familiar with the, the Missy misdemeanor, um, but uh, you got to strap it up before you smack it up. And if you don't, you got to get the, the morning after pill. The morning after pillium. The morning after pill? Pilly? All right. Uh, what's going on in my life? I had a random phone call from, a. I I I had a random phone call back in June from this number and I texted the number back. I said, hi, I just missed a call from this number. And then, uh, I never heard back from that person. Never heard back from whoever this human was. And, and, and then the other day I get a text from them like three months later, right? I get a text and it says in church phone off. Right. And I responded back and I said, who is this? Never heard from them again. So weird stuff. You know, my mom told me that she got a phone call from herself today. So that's, you know, technology is interesting. <laughs> technology 
is definitely interesting. My my apparently my sister, her dog is pregnant. So my sister has a dog, Snow, cutest dog ever, and she has a, a new dog that she got. I forget his name. It's Bo or something. And my sister said that Bo keeps on humping Snow. Like I guess Snow's in heat. Snow's a little older, and there's like this constant humping and and it like for the last couple of weeks there's there's been just like non-stop like dog sex and neither of the dogs are fixed for some reason i don't know why my sister didn't do that but nevertheless they think that snow's pregnant now so i might have to uh get one of the puppies off her hands if anybody out there <laughs> is looking for a, a puppy it's like a, it looks like a havanese type dog i forget the exact breed but it's like that small cute whatever you want to call it and I might, I might be having a dog or two here in New York to help my sister <laughs> get a puppy off her hands. So I think the moral of that is uh, get your dog fixed. Apparently they 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 did take care of Bo. They they cut his balls off, and uh, now he doesn't want to have sex anymore. Apparently now he's he's like over it. You know what I mean? So that kind of sucks because Snowby might be needing that dick. You know, kind of sucks. I feel bad for Snow. Nevertheless, so. Uh, Going back to uh, something that I meant to mention last week, one of my buddies who uh, is in Kappa Alpha Order, right? My, my friend Adam Palman's wedding, we were all catching up. And one of the guys actually works for Google. How, how cool is that? And, of course, this dude, the, uh, the new phone, right? or the iPhone 11 with the, the three camera for dick pics, three, three cameras for the perfect dick pic there. But he works for Google, and we were talking about data, data share, super interesting stuff. He was saying that. Basically, we do have the right to control what Google does have and doesn't have about us. And we can turn on whether or not we want targeted ads based on that. So it actually sounded very ethical. Maybe it's because he works for Google. I don't know, but I was excited and I was proud of him for getting a great job like that, you know. Um, so kind of a worldly update there for you. Another thing going on in my life is my dad. He's in a band in St. Louis. He was, he's uh, making some progress in, in the in the music scene. I mean, he obviously had his album come out not long ago, and now he's got a, a chair in the band, which means that he's a, he's a member, and it's a it's a jazz band, and it's doing what he loves, and they give him solos, they let him play, and you know they're giving him responsibility. And go check him out. Look up, look up, uh, hit up my dad, Mark Holdred, if you want to go check out his stuff in St. Louis. He has a regular show now that he's performing at and sounds like he's doing great you know he's knocking some of the solos out of the park he's doing great things you know he's, you know feeling good about it feeling like he's growing and very very proud of him for that and and excited i think uh, he's a great musician and uh the world's missing out on his talent so glad to glad to see that uh you know he's having that chance to to tear it up in the stl scene um what else when I was on Wall Street a couple of weeks back, uh, one of the guys who gives tours there was telling me that they like the Mizzou Business School students more than Harvard because the Mizzou students interact, they engage, ask questions, they're interpersonal. And they were saying that Harvard's like just quiet and disengaged on their phones. Some people are either too, too scared to look stupid and ask questions. Uh, but um, I thought that that was pretty awesome. You know, I thought that was pretty awesome to see Missouri is like uh, well liked and respected and appreciated and you know sometimes these big names you know you pay all this money it's like what are you actually paying for you're just paying for the perception you know sometimes I'm not saying Harvard's a bad school and I'm not saying that everyone who went to Harvard is just paying for perception but you got to think about it and ask yourself those questions sometimes is it the functionality the practicality that you're getting out of it or are you just paying for a piece of paper that looks cool or are you just paying for the brand or are you just spending a shitload of money to buy a piece piece of paper that that gives you what you think is credibility, um, <clears throat> I guess you got to think about what you value there. Um, next uh, point, my buddy, my buddy Danny, we were looking at my. Now that I'm like pursuing comedy full time, uh, he was looking at the amount of like the apps that I use most on my phone per day. He said like in a week, I spend eight hours on Twitter. Like I spent a full day on Twitter reading and being aware of what's going on in the world. So that's, uh, that's interesting. I guess when you're a comedian, you gotta like know what's going on. 
I don't know. You don't have to do shit. You, you don't have to do anything. You know what I mean? Whatever. It's just what I choose to do. Um, I told you guys that my ex-girlfriend Jessica is in love with me again. Um, we're on good terms. And uh, I wonder if she's home right now. <laughs> I'm recording in the in the in the in the closet where she likes to she likes to come in here and masturbate sometimes as do I now that we're not hooking up anymore we gotta like find a place where we can <laughs> masturbate and with a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of uh, peace I guess uh, but we're on good terms she's a she's a good uh, good one to have uh, you know on my side she's like Catwoman she's like my Catwoman in some ways you know. Selena Kyle. Um, speaking of uh, that whole thing, I showed you guys this garter belt that I caught a while back. That's pretty cool, right? I guess that means I'm going to get married at some point. I don't know. Time will tell, right? Time will tell. Time will tell. Um, I cut the garter belt more than once, actually. Um but I'm enjoying. Until then, I'm enjoying. Um, I'm enjoying uh, just mixing it up uh, with the ladies. I had a teacher in college tell me, "You you know you can't be a playboy forever, Michael." His name was uh, Carmen Menezes, and uh, I guess if there's anyone that I should at least consider taking their their word, it's a guy who understands economics very well on a high level. I guess there's uh, everything's on a uh, like an, an economics curve. <laughs> <laughs> he said I can't be a playboy forever, so we'll see. I'm still going though. We'll see. I'm hanging on by threads, you know. Um I had um I think that we're we're actually getting ready to end here. I can't believe I've been doing this for almost two hours. This is unbelievable. I don't think anyone's gonna listen to this whole podcast. <laughs> If you are still listening, you're God bless you guys. Dang it, you're awesome. God bless you either way. God bless you even if you're not getting uh, this podcast in your eardrums. Speaking of that, uh, my buddy Irvin, I've talked about him before, and uh, he said a couple of real nice things to me recently. You know, I think he's getting to know me. You know, he's he's my friend and su he supports my comedy a lot. He, He's, he gives me a good engagement right now on my, my social media because he's always commenting on stuff. But uh, he said he thinks that I see the best in people and uh, that I give people the benefit of the doubt, which glad to know that that's being perceived because that's true. I, I, I always try to see the best in the people. I always try to assume that I can't see everything. Um, and, he, and he said that uh, he, he, he thinks that old droid equals love, which is uh, it's like, is this dude trying to marry me or what? You know? No. <laughs> Urban, if you're listening, I really appreciate that compliment, man. Uh, that's uh, I'm gonna have to say that that's, that's I'm gonna have to be humble enough and, and say, you know, I uh, I can't. Uh, sometimes I might match up to a, a closely in some ways, but you know, lo love is perfect. I can only try my best to to live up to to what per what that perfection is. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect. I I, I try. But um, thank you for the compliment. And uh, do you guys remember when I, I said, I think Irvin, I said, you know, like what, you know, there's that song. What if God was one of us? Like, what if Irvin is secretly God, guys? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you remember, like Irvin is, uh, it's you know, like if God is like one of the most unexpected people ever, Irvin would be. <laughs> Irvin would be the most least likely candidate that's God, but it's it's very possible that anything's possible, guys. You know what I mean? I told you this dude like shows up in my life and creates value in mysterious ways. Uh, Irvin works in very mysterious ways. Uh, right now, I'm helping him. Um, I'm helping him find love. Actually, uh, there's a. I'm not going to go into much detail because it's personal, but uh, I'm basically a hitch for this dude. You know, Will Smith. And uh, just fulfilling the role of Cupid, right? So uh, I'm out here to help guys build up their confidence, guys. You know, we all have the potential in us. And, uh, yeah, if there's one thing that I can do. I'm going to start uh, offering private lessons. So if there's any guys out there that want practice, they need a wingman. They just, I think the hardest thing for guys to get over that is that fear of rejection. So if you need a wingman to go out with you and kind of take one for the team and, 
get some of the conversation started or help you, you know, kind of like help you revamp your, your dating profile. Uh, I'm out here, you know, I'm a, I'm a independent contractor. You know what I mean? You can Venmo me guys, my Venmo, follow me on Venmo too. It's at the droid T H E D R O Y D. And if you, if you do that, feel free to just Venmo me some money too. You know, I'm out here, <laughs> I'm out here. Uh, you know, this is my, my crowdfunding announcement. You know, I, uh, I'm funding everything myself, my career, my dream, my love for, for all this. So if anyone wants to just Venmo me some money to, to help support me or, or maybe just buy some of the things on my Amazon wish list, why do I have to get married for you to, why, why do I have to get married to have a registry? Right. I mean, some of my favorite porn stars have an Amazon <laughs> registry and their fans buy them stuff. So, uh, I am too. If anyone wants to buy me some of the stuff on my on my wish list, or just Venmo me some money, you know, and and just give give me the turbo follow, you know, follow me everywhere at Detroit. <laughs> I'll take it, uh, and I'll give you the follow back. We'll do a one for one ratio. I actually have this system in place where uh, I have private accounts, so even though my ratio looks good publicly, I secretly follow you from like a secret account, so that it's still like an equal ratio, and I'll like your statuses from my secret account, you know. I have a really good ratio on one account and a really terrible ratio on my other uh, accounts and it, it all cancels out, right? It's like, is that karma? I don't know if we're getting back to a theme of the, of the t talk today. So anyway, um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and um, I hope you have a great week. I, uh, we'll see if Donald Trump gets impeached. And uh, freaking go to heaven, guys, from Michelangelo Oldroid. Peace. See? That was an interesting, that was an interesting way to end. I don't know why I made those noises. Now I'm embarrassed. Uh, but you know what? It is what it is. Just, just deal with it, right? <laughs> Have a good week, guys. Peace. Oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. I went way too long. I just did an hour and 51 minute podcast. Oh my Zeus. Well, you know what? It was fun. Get to talking, man. Having a good time with it. Oh, the audience is cool. Jen, I got so much to catch up on. I see that you've been messaging nonstop for the last hour. I do appreciate that. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, listen to the podcast. I'll probably release it. It'll probably be out by tomorrow morning on Spotify. Um, for everybody on 17 Live AF, thanks for, for tuning in. Whoever is on YouTube that's been watching, thank you. You're still on. I, whoever is on YouTube right now, you probably aren't actually there. I bet you you just turned it on and then you walked away from the computer. <laughs> so if that's true, either way, I do appreciate you tuning in um yeah it's fun you know it's fun doing this stuff and i do appreciate your guys' support so i'm gonna end the youtube stream now have a good week peace love you